Okay, guys, today we're gonna learn how to scrape the New York Times. Okay, um, this you can, of course, use this technique to scrape pretty much any news site, but uh, we'll target the New York Times today and uh, let's see how we go about doing it. Okay. I have no real, I'm just gonna type NIT and let's see what portion of New York Times we can scrape because a lot of content in. The New York Times. So maybe we can um, we can scrape uh, one of these, right? Let's see. Okay. I mean, any any portion of New York Times. Maybe this. Maybe this. This. this uh, which has a series of data. Maybe this one. Okay, so let's just see for, first of all how to use Spider New York Times, right? So, so using Scrapey, if you're not downloaded Scrapey, go to Scrapey.org and download it. Very simple. Um, once you downloaded it, just anywhere create a file. Uh, let's call that nyt.py <clears throat> and import Scrapey just like so, all right? That loads up Scrapey, it expects. Then what you do is you declare a class which inherits from the spider class, which is what we're going to use now, because we need to first get the data. So we can call it something, um, NYT spider dot, you know, NYT scraper, I would call it. It's also a spider, so I'm going to call it both spider, and we're going to call um, we can only an extension of the scrapey.spider class. Okay. And here it expects a name for the spider, so we're going to call it quickly. We're going to give it New York Times Scraper Spider, I suppose. <laughs> right. And uh, there is no fetch function, none of that you need to do. Uh, you can just give it a start URL as an array. Fact. And there's a bunch of other things that you can do here, but uh, I'm just going to stick to the basics for now so that it doesn't confuse you. And you quickly learn quite a lot of things straight away in this tutorial how to use Scrapey, how to use CSS selectors. We're going to learn quickly. Um, we are going to see how to sort of find that data really. What is a quick um, way to do it? And also, how what to do with the data. Once you find it, how to create maybe dictionary objects and then print it and then maybe even save it to a CSV. How about that? Right? Okay, it's all going to be basics, not going to be super advanced. It, could, it need not be super optimized um, because that will take make it a one hour video, you know, instead of that, uh, or even a one week video because it takes time to build a scraper. And New York Times might block us. We'll see if, if it does that happens. And uh, if it does happen, then we'll have to see if, how we can overcome that. Okay. So start URLs is an array that we're going to pass. But in this case, I'm, we're just going to pass one URL, which will be the home page of New York Times. Right. So once we do that, what happens now? Um, well, immediately the scrapey spider gets into it, right? It starts getting all these URLs and it gives you the data. You don't even need to call anything, you know. And so it expects you to define a function to pass the data and uh, finally it calls it the pass function. By default you can change it, but this is where it goes. By default it gives you the self object as well as a response object, which contains all the stuff, the headers and the HTML and everything. You can do whatever you want with this response object now. Right, that's it. It's already done it, right? You could have had 300 URLs in the start URLs array and it give you all of them into the class um, once it finishes, all right? So what we do now though, we just want one URL and we want um, to extract some news items from that, right? So we're going to use the response object like this. It goes like this, response object as a CSS extraction mechanism which uses a function like so, okay? 
in which inside this you are going to simply specify like you would in jquery right it is the css selector just like jquery in jquery for example if you want an element with an id title you're going to call it hash title or whatever right uh, that will be the id if you want a class so you can put a dot there and then call it by the class name and it will it will extract that into an array for you here okay so we're going to see how that happens by going to right let's see if we can get this part like this looks pretty at least there's a few pieces here and it really looks pretty simple so let's just inspect this to find the css selectors that scrapy needs to seems to support okay. so if you look at this this funny thing about this which is that i think asset whatever i like this name so i'm i'm trying to look at which now which particular css class because these are all things that has the data embedded within it you know what I mean? And it's going to be a little tricky here, uh, finding the right piece. So for example, I can easily get the issue data here and get straight to this point. And maybe I should do that. But then I also want the link. The link data is defined slightly differently over here with the NL ending class. Um, all right okay let's do one by one i'm just gonna get um i'm trying to now see what is the most optimum way of doing it i think i'm just gonna try this i think this this one this particular class so let's try use that put a dot there I need that thing extract needs that it passes an array back to you so this is these are our titles so i'm going to call it titles notice that i'm calling it titles not title because it's an array okay just remind myself that i'm going to do that now i need to find while we're at it let's just find the links because without that what's the point right there you go so we want this so because this doesn't really have a class defined i'm just going to go one up which is this and see if we can get this yeah that goes to a particular audience i almost didn't read the text text there too dead in shooting in case of carolina all right so i just want to go here and see if there's a regularity of links to go to the next one and see if yeah it has the same particular weird class names so i think we are on the right track okay so i'm going to get this class and inside of that class we are aware that it has a href inside of that so but for now we just want this out of here out here getting us the links and see what happens there we go <clears throat> and now here's a funny thing before we do anything the array titles has all the titles that has that particular class and array links has all the links which has that and they don't they're not sort of married to map to each other yet right they're two separate sort of unmapped um, arrays so we got to bring them together and put it in a dictionary by doing this we're going to use the zip class for item in zip of zip class titles comma links zip them together of python zip class a zip function and keeps on calling it class and create a dictionary called all from items we create all items dictionary and i'm gonna it's like an associative array so you can name it whatever so i'm going to call it title remember that here i'm not calling it titles it reminds me that it's an individual item title and uh, 
I am going to call item of zero. First one will be the title, and the second one will be the link. Again, not links. So I'm going to call it link item of one. Okay. So now, what do we do with items? We need to we need to yield it back to Scrappy, right? All items. There we go. Let's just see if fingers crossed, guys. There are multiple steps I think we need to do over here. So here's how you run it. We call Scrapy and ask Scrapy to run Spider and then NYT dot D1. Just a preliminary run. Anything can happen. Oh, okay. There's an error. Um, oh, sorry. This is can't be. Like this, there we go. All right, so we got something. We got the link. The link has the link inside of it. If you can see it there. All right, and then there is the title, which has a parish to class, blah blah blah, inside of it. Okay, so we got to clean this up now. Okay, and we have to get to the link. And there's a way to do that, which is just call the href inside of it. So let's play with the link for a second. This is a class, which is the division here. If you look at this division, holds the href inside of it. So if you, if you look, if you were to do it in jQuery, here's how I do it. I would say, once you got in this class, inside the class, get me the the a href the the anchor element. But out of that, I need the attribute um, href because the anchor element itself contains multiple things. The 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 link itself, the h the href part of it itself as well as containing the, the 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 text part of it which which shows the anchor that anchor text we don't we're not interested in anchor text we need the href so i'm going to call it href attribute of href hopefully this will work i'm going to save this it may not be still be clean yeah see that you can see that it got me the relative link I can always add New York Times to that. If I add New York Times to that, I'll get the entire entire thing. All right. So what I'll do is now, but the but the title has H2 class, blah blah blah, these things, right? I can sort of go dig deeper into this and get it. But instead of that, what I'm going to do is I am going to let this play out. I'll use, I'll clean that up. I'll clean the HTML using Beautiful Soup. Okay, Beautiful Soup is a library which works very well with rogue HTML. Not that this is rogue. Uh, if you're not installed it, please install it. You'll also learn how to simply use one simple command in Beautiful Soup to get this job done. Uh, so once you've installed Beautiful Soup, I always have it on my computer anyway. Uh, I'm going to invoke it here. I'm going to import it. Um, import. Beautiful soup. This is going to help me clean up this link. So what I'll do is I will call beautiful soup, pass this, and call the the HTML to text function inside of it. Just by simply calling dot txt for the link. I don't need to do that. I'm just going to leave that alone. Then. I should have clean data. Here we go. There you go. Reporters face new threats from the government. They come with questions with democracy. Okay. So now what I can do is export all this into a simple CSV file. Here's how we do it. Minus O output and and I would say NYT dot CSV. It's really late at the night here. I'm losing a little bit of 
concentration, three o'clock in the night, uh, in the morning, this is. Uh, okay, dot .csv export. Here we go. So there you go, stored CSV feed, 23 items in New York Times or CSV. Turns out there's a lot of other classes which have the same name, so it's not just gotten me this particular corner of New York Times, but quite a lot of other links as well. All right, so I told you this is not going to be super optimized because who has the time for that? You can always use many other patterns and tricks to restrict it if you have to. But I'm just going to see how the CSV data looks. There you go. Okay. So these are the links. You can just add New York Times to it. And these are, so it's in link and title. And here we go, cleaned up data, all from a simple piece of code, which is probably what, 21 lines long. And you can get New York Times. But there's a catch here. The New York Times might block you, it will block you, or writers, or whatever it is that you're gonna scrape with this technique, and eventually you're gonna get blocked, because this happens to them quite a lot. And the way around it is actually using a rotating proxy service. Because how many IPs are you going to change by, you know, restarting your routers or getting more IPs on your servers or even floating your servers? You can't keep it, doing it forever because all of them do get blocked. So I have something to sell, which is my own, you know, rotating proxy service here uh, called uh, Proxies API. I'm the founder. And if you go to, um, CCP. In fact, there's a free thing I want to offer you, which is a thousand API calls free for a month. No questions asked, no credit card required. You just have to sign up, get your API key, and call the endpoint directly with the URL you want to call, which is newyorktimes.com instead of example.com here as a parameter to me. And I will pass it through a you know different proxies till I get your results. It happens so fast you won't really realize because we have automatic retries. Uh, we have browser spoofing, like user agent string spoofing, and um, even rendering, every, 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 all sorts of supports we give you till basically almost impossible to get blocked and takes all the headaches away. We handle hundreds of clients with millions of fetches per day. Um, so we know what it takes and uh, to, uh, to do the scraping of this sort. So I hope you enjoyed, even if you don't use it or use somebody else. Um, it doesn't matter because I have to tell you this because this is the reality of web scraping is that without a rotating proxy service, I do not think you will be able to build a scalable and reliable and a serious web scraper. Okay, so that's how we scrape New York Times. If you have any questions, please leave comments below on YouTube and then I'll be able to respond and help you out in any way. Thank you guys.